It's time now for some U.S. news. Now, there is another scandal brewing across the pond after Donald Trump on Friday posted a video that featured an image of President Joe Biden tied up in the back of a pickup truck. The Biden campaign team accused Mr. Trump of regularly inciting political violence ahead of November's election. So, look, let's get some reaction there from American Democratic strate strategist and political commentator Robert Wiener. Robert, thanks ever so much for joining us there. Now, this is the kind of thing that Donald Trump typically does. You know, he's trying to shock. Do you think it's a bit of a, a, an overreaction to say that this is explicitly incitement to violence? Of course it is. And Andrew, good to be with you again. Hello. Um, it's unbelievable. If any other American uh, had said, uh, here's a picture and uh, look at the look at the video of Biden tied up, hog tied in the back of a pickup truck. Or if any other American had said, there'll be a bloodbath if I lose. The Secret Service, the U.S. Marshals and the Attorney General's representative would be at his door, at that person's door, asking, what do you mean? And if they did their jobs, then it could be an incentive for Trump but, to shut the heck up about these violence incentives. But Robert, to be fair, you must know that when he used the phrase bloodbath, he was using a metaphor talking about the, the car industry. He wasn't actually saying there would be some kind of bloody revolution if he wasn't voted in. And you do know that because you'll have seen the context. Uh, he used the term bloodbath and he knows what he's doing when he does it. So this is the guy who brought you January 6th and the bashing in of the Capitol. Uh, I'm just saying that uh, any other American who did this, any other American, and by the way, 300 of them have been convicted and are in jail, by the way, now, any other American who did this, the Secret Service and the U.S. Marshals and the Attorney General's rep would be at his door asking, what did you mean by bloodbath? But, but what that do you mean by putting a picture out of Biden hog tied in a truck? Well, you're not going to get any defense from me for Donald Trump putting out that picture. I do think it's, it's too much. But I also think that politics often has robust metaphors, often relating to uh, militarism. Bloodbath is a, a metaphor that's been used by Democrats as well as Republicans uh, for, for decades. Um, so, I mean, we do have to, in some sense, recognize that sometimes we shouldn't take these phrases literally, should we, even if they are coming from Trump. This from the guy that says, go hit them and I'll pay your legal fees. I mean, this guy means it when he says it. Don't forget that uh, uh, Trump uh, and, uh, and Roger Stone, who they really haven't done any kind of a good investigation because Trump pardoned him, uh, incited with in coordination with the Oath Keepers and, and, and the other groups. So this is a guy who, who wants to create uh, as much chaos and havoc and violence as he can because it goes to his advantage. I'm just saying, when you get on your headline, hogtied Biden, that would be a reason for the Secret Service and the U.S. Marshals. They're talking about the president of the United States, by the way. That's a term that he's applying to Biden. When you're doing that, you, you need the FBI at your door. So you actually think that, that no one can make, say, a joke or, or use phrases that's a bit colorful, hogtied Biden, that kind of thing, without getting the police involved? I mean, isn't, isn't that a bit of an infringement of, on, your, on your First Amendment? I would have the U.S. Marshals, who, if any other American said that, they would be at his door. Would they? Asking, what I'm, not, you mean? I'm not so sure about that. I mean, I've heard some pretty colorful stuff from politicians, not just politicians, but people that, uh, uh, every day. I think it's quite a stretch maybe to take that image and say this is a literal call for someone to hog tie Biden and put him in the car. Isn't that isn't that taking things just a bit too literally? No, not in Trump's case. This is this is the guy who brought you January 6th. Well, I don't know what you mean by that quite, because uh, when it comes to January the 6th, it is not as though he... But he didn't organize that and orchestrate that. You know, I mean, I don't think there's any legal expert in America who would suggest that his words on that day fulfill the Brandenburg test to incitement to violence. Roger Stone was in the hotel next door. Roger Stone talked to Trump about every day and kept him brief. They have not investigated that since Trump pardoned him. And do Roger Stone has been known for doing that kind of thing. Do you think, Robert, that sometimes uh, when there are these attacks on, on Trump, whether they're justified or not, it kind of plays into his hands a little bit? And that maybe as a provocateur, which I th I'm sure he is, he's putting this out here precisely to get the kind of reaction that he is now currently getting. Well, he loves being in the press, good or bad. But his polls have been dropping since he lost those financial court cases in New York. And, uh, and and the uh, Gene Carroll case, the, the two of them. Um, and uh, with the more information that comes out and the evidence and, the, and, and all of that of what he has done, uh, 
in the fake electors and, uh, and in the file gate and all of that, as more of that comes out, he's losing independents and Republicans. You know that the polls have moved. I said to Jim Clyburn, I, I sat there and watched the State of the Union in the National Democratic headquarters, and the, and the leadership came and went uh, to, to and from that place uh, right before and after the speech. I said to him, because of that State of the Union, Biden's gaining five to six points, and Clyburn said to me, that's exactly right. So, I mean, that's, that is what happened. The, uh, what Biden showed there, the polls are now... 45, 45, Biden up by one in the three kings, uh, uh, swing states, and uh, and the, and he's, he's he's no longer way behind in the in the presidential race, and that's going to be more and more as we move toward the election. Did you think though that sometimes? I mean, we've seen examples of, as you know, certain states trying to take Trump off the ballot. Uh, and that hasn't been successful. And we saw the Supreme Court rule unanimously that they couldn't do that, that that was unconstitutional, that whenever they do that, it plays into Trump's narrative that there is a kind of deep state who are out to get him, uh, that effectively uh, there's, there's all this uh, conspiracy and corruption to try and undemocratically uh, scupper his chances. Do you worry that sometimes when they pursue these actions, they must know that it eventually it will play into his hands? It will confirm the narrative he's been promoting? Uh, it doesn't play into his hands because it more and more points to the things that Trump has done. And the more and more that keeps coming out, as the January 6th hearings did, he lost 10 points. I told Pelosi he lost big time during the January 6th hearings. And the more that the truth comes out, and that's what we're after, is the uh, truth, the truth, the truth. But what about this? That truth on Republicans and independents. But what about this specific case of Colorado trying to take him off the ballot? Because wasn't it always clear that there's no way the Supreme Court is going to allow that to happen? And that's not just a Supreme Court of Republicans, of course. That's also people like Katenji Brown Jackson who is voting and saying this is absolutely unacceptable. Acceptable. Well, the Constitution was written and several states called for him to be off the ballot. And, and uh, the fact that that was advocated by several states, uh, I don't think that helps him. How can that possibly help when it says, and, and by the way, the court didn't deny that he, that he ge helped generate a, a riot and helped generate an insurrection. They just said because of process, it's not right. They came up with a process argument. So I don't think that that helps him in the slightest to have those arguments out there. And uh, we've done some op-eds on that. You've got to read the 14th Amendment. If, if you assist in an insurrection, you shall not be eligible for office. That's what it says. So what about this other issue of Trump selling Bibles? I mean, is this just another uh, gimmick? Uh, these are Trump-approved Bibles. I mean, I know that there are a lot of American Christians that don't really feel that Donald Trump is much of a, a strong Christian role model, but they, they're just going to vote for him because they think he's, uh, he's better for their interests. Uh, do you think this is going to backfire on him? Well, it's pathetic. Buy my Bible, pay my porn star's lawyer. That's what it effectively means. And uh, to, to, to tie the two of those together, uh, when he's got all, all the, this legal fees on this kind of stuff to have to pay, um, it's outrageous. I mean, he's, he's turned into a huckster. Does America want to elect a huckster? I don't think so. I, I wonder whether he's just trying to be funny there. I mean, it does seem like it, it feels a bit like when he was selling the golden train as, as Trump his Trump sneakers, you would call them in America. And they're, they're I mean, they're bright gold leather. I mean, I they're not very tasteful. It feels like he's having a joke. It feels like he's trolling. I mean, maybe I've got that wrong. What do you think? I think this is the guy who did the wines, the colleges, the business that have all been disbanded by the courts. Everybody forgets that his foundation was shut down. His college was shut down. He bribed uh, the Florida Attorney General $25, uh, uh, what was it, $25 million, I think, and, and then she dropped the case against him. So this is a guy who has everything shut down, and uh, he's got to pay, gee, dropped down to $175 million in fines now. Uh, this is a guy who, who's just as slimy a businessman as there can be, and that's the impression that people now have. But isn't there a worry that a lot of people, and Democrats included, are nervous about a second term with, with Biden? They're worried about his ability to maintain such a campaign and that maybe Donald Trump will benefit simply by virtue of that. That's the old news, Andrew. That's the old news. The new news is Biden, Biden in every speech, by the way, that he's ever done to the press clubs and to the State of the Union and to the and, and Congress, every one, he wows them with his energy and his substance. And the fact that he got the infrastructure bill passed when Trump had weeks and weeks and weeks of this is going to be infrastructure week and, and all of that, uh, the fact that he, uh, he got the budgets passed 
um, and uh, got the student loan. He did an end run around the Supreme Court. That was pretty brilliant, by the way, the way that he did these end runs and got the student loans out to the kids, $250 billion worth or something like that. So it's amazing what he has accomplished. And that word is finally getting out. And what's Trump got to uh, show for accomplishment? Not building a wall, not getting Mexico to pay for it. Uh, and he claims great economy. He's the only president since Hoover since who lost jobs in his presidency. So uh, it's and, and the economy is roaring and the world is benefiting from it now with uh, Biden jacking the programs and the money into into uh, programs. Uh, so uh, I think Biden's got a lot going on and he's showing it every day. Yeah, I think it's very clear, Robert, where you stand on this issue. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. A pleasure.